Good afternoon. So let's talk about regular Markov chains. This is one type of Markov chains with a very nice property and a very useful property in terms of predicting the behavior or the um, long-term outcomes if an experiment is performed repeatedly. Uh, as with many topics in the probability theory, you will see that the computation part of it is very easy actually and quick. So let's spend time uh, primarily on understanding the, the main concept. And as with uh, other uh, situations, it's best to talk about a couple of examples before we define what we mean by a regular Markov chain. So I'm going to show you two simple experiments um, which have only one slight difference between the two. And then we're going to look at uh, some diagrams and some properties related to these experiments. So let's talk about an experiment that leads to a Markov chain with uh, only two states. Um, so for example, the scenario is a person uh, who either drives or walks to work every day. And then whether the person drives or walks every day depends on whether that person walked or drove uh, the previous day. To make it a Markov chain, remember, we need to uh, have some probabilities. I mean, the probability of whether the person drives or walks depends on the previous uh, day situation, driving or, or um, walking. So the rules of the game are as follows. Let's say that if the uh, person drives today, he will uh, drive or walk tomorrow with equal probability. I should have said equally likely, sounds better, but you get the gist of it, right? So the two possibilities are equally likely. If the person drives in a given day, uh, that person will drive or walk with uh, equal probability. Uh, and then let's say that uh, if the person walks today, then he will drive tomorrow. Okay, so each time he or she walks, um, then automatically she will, he or she will drive tomorrow. Um, so we're gonna write the transition matrix immediately and then some diagram, but let's, let's review how we um, come up with the transition matrix. So remember, if you look at the matrix, this is gonna be a two by two matrix, obviously, right? Um, you can think of the rows are the states in a given day, today, let's say, driving or walking, and then the columns will denote the same states, but those will be the states for the next observation, which is the next day. Okay, so because the person is equally likely to drive or walk tomorrow, if the person drives today, then the probabilities of driving and walking next day are 0 0.5, 0 0.5 on the first row. So remember, um, in the transition matrix, P11 um, is the transition from state one to state one, or in this case, from D to D, driving today, driving tomorrow. And then P12, to use the notation um, for a generic general transition matrix, from, from one to column two, which means driving today, walking tomorrow. Now, pay attention to the second row, because if the person walks today, definitely the person will drive tomorrow. There is no other possibility, so that means that person will drive tomorrow with probability one and the person will walk with probability zero. Again, the sum of the elements on each row should be equal to one. So in this case, the transition matrix, let's call it big P, is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, one and zero. Um, I put this big five kind of too big here. Now, um, Let's also, this is going to be actually um, not required in the problems, but for this example, 
let's actually look at the little diagram of the two states and indicate by arrows the possible transitions, right? So you have driving and walking. If you're in this node, in the driving node, you can either drive or walk. So you have basically one arrow coming in and one arrow coming out, meaning that you may either continue to drive next day or walk the next day. But from the walk state, from W, you can only have, um, you have also, like I said, you have the, um, the arrow back to driving, no, no uh, arrow to itself. I want you to notice here, because this will be important to, to compare with the other example, notice that each node, if you look at this diagram, has arrows both in and out, right? So there's a possibility of coming into that state from a different state and a probability of coming out of the state to a different state. Um, so let's go back to what we learned in the previous section that if we increase the power of P, so if you compute uh, if you compute, not increase, but if you compute uh, the powers of the transition matrix, P squared, P third, and so on, these will be the transition matrices after two, three, four, and so on observations. In this case, after two, three, four days, because each observation takes in a given day. So let's actually compute what happens two observation later or two days later. So if we multiply the matrix by itself, we have 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 times 1. And then the other entry is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 uh, plus 0, right? Because it's 0 0.5 times 0. Then it's going to be 1 times 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5 plus 0 times 1. And then the last entry, 1 times 0 0.5 again, uh, plus 0 times 0. So P squared is going to be, let's see, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that's 0 0.25, and plus another 0 0.5, that's uh, 0 0.75. Uh, this is 0 0.25. And then the second row is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So again, the sum of the rows should be one. The important remark here, before we define what we mean a regular Markov chain is notice that um, all entries are positive, are non-zero. So if you look at the original transition matrix, there is a zero probability of walking to walking. Right? I mean, in one observation, if you look at one observation, from walking to walking, that's not possible. That's zero probability if you look at this corner over here. But if we repeat the experiment several times, in this case, two times, then all transitions are possible after more than one observation. So the meaning of the fact that uh, the entries are non-zero means that each entry can be reached from any entry, any other entry, after some uh, number of observations. So even though in the beginning there is a zero chance from walking to walking, after many repetitions of the experiment, then there is a probability, there is a non-zero probability of walking to walking. And if you look at the diagram over here, the reason is pretty clear. In one observation, obviously, if you're, um, uh, in, if you're in walking state in the beginning, then there is only the arrow coming to the driving part. But then from the driving part, you know, I mean, if you repeat the experiment, then you go back to walking. So after several experiments, even though you may uh, walk today, and then next day you cannot walk, right? Next day you're going to drive, but then after another observation, there is a chance that you're going to walk again. So that's why there is a non-zero probability of walking to walking after some number of observations. Again, the number in this case is two, but there's no rule about it. I mean, in many other Markov chains, maybe you have to repeat the experiment three, four, five times and so on 
until all the transition probabilities are non-zero. So this will be an example of a regular Markov chain. So let's actually state the definition at this point. So uh, a Markov chain is regular uh, if its transition matrix P has the property that P to the N has uh, non-zero entries um, for some power N, which is a natural number, right? I mean, in this case, it was two. So basically, to figure out that something is a some Markov chain is the is a regular Markov chain, you basically re increase the power. I mean, first of all, if you start with non-zero entries, then it's clearly re regular, right? I mean, uh, if I say here's a Markov chain with the transition matrix one over five, four over five, uh, two over three, one over three, then obviously this is regular, right? But if you have zero entries, then you will have to compute. So if it has zero entries, you need to compute p squared, p third, and so on, uh, to see if uh, zero entries disappears. Zero entries disappear. Uh, there is another way actually to, to check to see if it's not regular. Um, but here's an example. Uh, let's finish this page with an example of a Markov chain which is not regular. So let's choose the same story, the same background. But let's say now that, so again, if you drive today, the first statement is the same. So drive today, then equally likely to drive or walk tomorrow but let's say if the person walks today then that person walks tomorrow so you kind of get the feeling what's the main difference here see once you get into the walking stage you kind of remain there forever so one major difference if you look at the diagram let's do the the same diagram bef as before so the node D kind of is the same. So you're going to have some probability of uh, driving if you drive today, equally likely probability of walking tomorrow. But if you walk today, then you're going to walk tomorrow. So then there is another arrow pointing inward to the W state. So uh, basically the W has only inward arrows. Um, if you look at the transition matrix, it may not seem like a big difference. So let's look at the transition matrix. So if you drive today, you're equally likely to drive or walk tomorrow. But now the position of one is on the other corner. So if you drive, if you walk today, so remember, it's like these are the labels, driving, walking, walking, driving, walking. So if you walk today, you're going to continue to walk tomorrow with probability one. So of course you're gonna drive with probability zero. So the second row is zero one. And if you take the power of two, if you, if you compute the transition matrix after two observations, so let's do this uh, quickly, this product, you're gonna end up, the first row, it's, um, uh, what is it, the first row? It's gonna be 0.75, the same thing as before. Um, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0.5, 0, 0.1, 0.5, 0.5, 0.1, no, uh, let's see, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0, 0.1, and so it's 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 plus is 0 0.25, sorry about that, and then the second entry is going to be 0 0.75, and then here is going to be 0, 0 times 1.5, um, one times zero and then zero times 1.5, one times one. So notice that 
no matter how much, how often you raise the power of P, the last row is only zero one. Okay, so that means you always have a zero entry, which means the Markov chain is not regular. And in fact, this state, the W state, is called an absorbing state. Very important concept, which we're going to talk about in the next section as well. Absorbing means that once you reach it, you won't leave it. Okay, so once you reach a, um, an absorbing state, you won't leave it. And one way to figure out if you look at the diagram is to see that all the arrows point inward. Um, into that state. Uh, so once again, you can reach the absorbing state from another state, right? You can drive first and then walk next day. But once you walk, once you are in this state, there is no escaping it. So there's the probability of one with remaining in that state. You may wonder why, why actually it's so important in practice because this example seems kind of arbitrary, right? I mean, like, you know, I just decreed that if I walk today, I'm gonna walk tomorrow. But there are other examples of absorbing states, which we'll talk about later, um, that make more sense in real life. For instance, let's say you as a student are in one of the following states, freshman, senior, uh, what is the word? Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, graduate, uh, or dropped, dropped out from school, for example. If you think of this as transition, I mean, as states that change from one year to another, Right, so for example, if you're freshman this year, there is a probability of moving from freshman to a sophomore next year, or maybe repeating a year if you have problems. But for example, if you reach the uh, graduate state from senior to graduate, then that's gonna be an absorbing state because you won't leave the state of being a graduate of the university, right? I mean, you're done essentially, so you're not gonna come back and become again senior, um, junior, freshman, and so on. So in that sense, absorbing states are important, uh, as you will see later, and um, uh, you know, and also how to estimate the probabilities of reaching them from one state um, to another. So uh, we're going to stay tuned for the next page. We're going to talk about all the main property of regular Markov chains, which we'll talk about in a minute. So uh, stay tuned for the second page. So on this second part of this lecture, we're going to talk about what we call the long-term behavior of regular Markov chains. <clears throat> this has a powerful predictive uh, property because you will see that after enough repetitions, regular Markov chains kind of settle at a certain distribution of probabilities. And I want to make it clear here so that you won't forget, or I won't forget, that some examples will be run with Maple as well. So run examples uh, with Maple, or you could do something similar like with Wolfram Alpha if you if you know. But any computer algebra software that can compute uh, multiplication of matrices to make it easier. But I'm going to include the set last part of this lecture with. Well, I'm going to show you how, how this looks like on, um, on a computer. So what I'm talking about here with the long-term behavior, let's say you have a transition matrix M equals 3 over 4, 1 over 4, 1 over 2, 1 over 2. This is obviously a regular uh, Markov chain. Uh, so if... And then I'm going to do this with maple so I can save time. M squared, if you actually do using the calculator, you'll see that this is going to be 0 0.687, 0 0.31, 0 0.62, 0 0.37. As you continue to compute higher and higher powers, you will notice that M to the N for N large, now how large it is, it depends on the Markov chain itself, but if you if you let n to be large, so after enough observations, if you keep on increasing the power of n and you compute these transition matrices, you will see that m to the n approaches a fixed matrix 
that won't change after that, which in this case will be, for this particular example, will be 2 over 3, 1 over 3, 2 over 3, 1 over 3. So uh, this matrix is denoted sometimes by T, by big T. But the fact that you reach that fixed matrix, one clue is that the rows will be the same, which has an important implication when you look at the um, end result of a probability distribution to begin with. So I'm going to show you this with Maple, right? So if you increase, like I said, the power of the transition matrix, you're going to, and you watched how the entries change, uh, you will see that in the end, they will settle at a um, specific, um, at a fixed matrix with the same rows. Now, why is that important? Um, well, imagine, for example, that we start with a probability distribution. doesn't matter which probability distribution. So remember the notation was V naught, and let's say that's A and B. Now remember A and B are probabilities, so they should add up to one. But again, it can be any probability distribution, one half, one half, four over five, one over five, one zero, zero, one, whatever you like. And so imagine that you start with this probability distribution and you keep on multiplying to the left of the transition matrix. That is to say, you want to see what this probability distribution becomes after one observation, then after another observation, second observation, third observation, and so on and so forth. Because after enough observations, like I said, this product approaches this fixed matrix, that means you end up basically with uh, applying the transition matrix 2 over 3, 1 over 3, 2 over 3, 1 over 3, to this uh, initial probability distribution. And let's actually compute this product to see what we get. Now remember, we multiply a 1 by 2 matrix with a 2 by 2 matrix. So that the answer, of course, is going to be another probability distribution, a 1 by 2 matrix, that is. So it's going to be A times 2 over 3 plus B times 2 over 3. And then row one, column one, that's going to be A times one over three plus B times one over three. And pay attention here, we can, in the first entry, we can pull out two over three. And in the second entry, we can pull out one over three. But because A plus B is one, remember, no matter which probability distribution you start with, the sum of the entries should be one, you end up with two over three. 1 over 3. So that's a very powerful thing we just discovered here together. Because it states that doesn't matter, in a regular Markov chain, doesn't matter your starting probability distribution. After enough observation, you will end up with a fixed probability of being in one state and a specific fixed probability of uh, being in the, uh, in the other state. Uh, so basically, this will be a fixed vector or, or a fixed uh, probability distribution. It's denoted by little t in, the, in our uh, book. Um, so it means that you can predict basically the probability of being in one state or the other after enough repetition. And that's going to be a fixed probability distribution, doesn't regardless of how you started with. So it stands the reason that it's important to be able to find that probability or fixed probability distribution if we have a regular Markov chain. So uh, in our, let's actually write this as a remark, what I just said, and then we're going to finish on with how we can actually find this uh, probability distribution. So again, as a remark, let's just write what I just mentioned here. Uh, a regular Markov chain, so... Um, so after enough observations, uh, the distribution uh, 
AB approaches a fixed distribution, meaning that one change um, later on after subsequent observations. All right, so how do we find this fixed distribution? So how to find the fixed distribution of a regular Markov chain? Well, conceptually actually it's very easy because you're gonna reach a state. So let's again denote this probability distribution by A, B, right? Um, you can actually skip this T notation if you want, but if this is the distribution that the process settles, it means that if you apply another transition matrix, then it won't change anymore. So from the description itself of the uh, fixed distribution, it means that whatever that distribution is, let's, let's call it AB, if we apply again the original Markov chain, so let's say as an example, let's take another uh, matrix here. So let's say the Markov chain is one over four. Uh, well, actually let's do, yeah, no, let's do, let's do the, for, the, for our uh, example that we just started here before. So if we apply the uh, transition matrix of the Markov chain we talked about already, three over four, one over four, one half, one half, then if this is a fixed distribution, that's not gonna change. So you basically find what it is by setting up the main property uh, of a fixed distribution. So if A and B is a fixed distribution, the application of another transition matrix won't change that distribution. So you end up with the same AB. And again, don't forget, very important, that A plus B is equal to one because it's a probability distribution, right? So those entries should add up to one. Okay, so that means we can come up with a system of equations here. So if we multiply the matrices on the left, we end up with three over four times A plus one over two times B. Uh, and then uh, the second entry will be, so that's gonna be uh, first part. And the second entry is gonna be one over four times A plus one over two times B. And this should be equal to AB. So that gives you basically two equations, three over four A plus one over two B equals A, one over four A plus one over two B equals B. Now you will notice that these two equations are actually the same. Don't worry about it. I mean, that's actually a control check. It means your computation is correct. You will always end up with the same um, uh, equations. So the system will be formed from one of these and then the fact that a plus b equals one. But uh, take a look at this so we can see that these are indeed the same equation. So let's multiply both sides by four just to clear the denominators. So we're gonna end up with three a plus two b equals four a. And the second equation is a plus two b equals four b. Now, if I move these to the left side, uh, I'm going to get, so 3a minus 4a is minus a plus 2b equals 0. And the other one is a minus 2b equals 0. These are really the same, right? I mean, if I move uh, the terms to the right-hand side, it's, it's the same, a minus 2b equals 0. So same equations, just choose one of them, right? So choose, for example, a minus 2b equals 0 and pair it with the fact that a plus b equals one. So never forget that you will always have one equation that comes from knowing that this is a probability distribution. So the entries add up to one. Uh, solve the system by elimination. That's the easiest thing. We can multiply the second equation by two. So we have two a plus two b equals two. Add the two together. That's gonna be three a equals two. a equals two over three. And of course, from the last equation, if I plug in two over three for A, B will be one minus two over three, which is one over three. So the fixed probability distribution is two over three, one over three, 
which I already mentioned in the um, in the beginning of the page over here. So to summarize, and we're going to move on with a couple of other examples before we call it a day. There are essentially, you know, two ways to figure out this probability distribution. The kind of trial and error or intuitive way is to keep on increasing the powers of the transition matrix. And at some point, if the Markov chain is regular, that power will settle at a uh, fixed matrix. Each row will be the same and each row will be actually the probability distribution. But we want to have a more precise tool to do that because we don't know actually how many times we have to raise the power of M until we notice that uh, matrix settles. So instead, we basically solve for the probability, fixed probability distribution, right? We denote the fixed probability distribution by a row matrix AB and we multiply that by the transition matrix and you set it equal to the same row matrix AB because that's going to be the main property of the fixed probability distribution. It will settle after another observation. So when you do this matrix multiplication, you end up with uh, a bunch of equations. Two of them will be the same, two or more of them, it depends on the number of entries you will see. Uh, and together with the fact that the sum of the entries should be one, that allows you to actually solve for the probability distribution. So you can predict that in the long run, uh, it will settle to two over three, one over three. So we're gonna finish the class with um, one more example, one or two examples, and then, like I said, uh, Maple presentation quickly at the end of the um, uh, lecture. So stay tuned. So we'll finish with a quick example. Well, not that quick. I just want to make it a word problem as well, just to see the utility of the concept. Uh, and then, like I said, we're going to finish with a quick Maple presentation so you can see how these... Um, um, Markov, regular Markov chain settle uh, at a fixed probability. So uh, take, a, take a moment, pause the video at some point and take a moment to write this down. Let's say in a town we separate the people by those who rent or um, own a house. Okay, so and then we have the transition um, rules or probabilities in the following way. So in a town, 25% of people who rent um, will continue to rent next year. Again, forget about the realism of the numbers. Let's just say that a quarter of them will continue to rent, but then the rest of them, 75%, will uh, decide to own. Basically, they buy the house and become homeowners. Of those who own, let's say 50% of them will get tired of owning the house and will lease next year. Not realistic at all, but bear with me. And 50% of them will own. Okay, so if you own this year, then there's a 50% chance uh, that uh, that person will lease next year and 50% chance that that person will own the house. So here's the key thing that leads to the notion of the fixed probability. In the long run, so after many, many years or observations, how many people will rent and own? What will be the breakdown in percentages of uh, owning or leasing? Um, now, we can write this in terms of probabilities and we can you can basically write a little diagram if you want it's not required but you know you could do it like that if if you rent then and let's actually use fractions for probabilities because it's probably easier so it's a one fourth probability of le um, of again continue to rent and three over four which is the same as 75 percent of owning if you want there's a um, one half percent, um, one half chance of probability to rent, and then one half um, chance to continue to own the house next uh, year. So the transition matrix will be if you write in this order: renting, owning, renting, owning, will be rent to rent is going to be one over four, three over four, and then one half, one half. So that's the transition probability. And obviously, because we have no zero entries, this is a regular Markov chain. All right, so the question what happens in the long run, it's the question of finding the fixed probability distribution.
it's that probability distribution AB such that when you apply one more time the transition matrix, it won't change anymore. And, then, and again, don't forget that together with this, A plus B equals one. Remember both one of these equations, I mean, is the same as the other one. So when you actually compute this matrix multiplication and you set it equal to AB, you end up in fact with two equations identical to each other. That's why you also need this A plus B equals one. So let's do the matrix multiplication. We have one over four A plus one over two B should be equal to A. Uh, 3 over 4a plus 1 over 2b equals b. If you're, con if you're convinced that your computation is correct, you can just drop one of the first two equations because both are the same. Uh, if you're not certain, do some simplification just to convince yourselves that these first two are the same. So if I multiply by 4, I get a plus 2b equals 4a. Um, and then uh, let's see, 3a plus 2b equals 4b. Uh, let's move a to the right hand side, that gives and b to the right hand side. So that's 4a minus a, which is 3a minus 2b equals 0. Notice if I move 4b on the left, unsurprisingly, again, I get 3a minus 2b equals 0. So when you solve for a and b, you really look at just two equations, right? A plus B equals one and one of the other uh, that came up from setting those matrices equal to each other. Uh, let's do elimination. So we multiply the second equation by two. So we can eliminate B. Add the two together. Five A equals two. A equals two over five. Come back to the last equations, two over five plus B equals one, B will be three over five. Um, two over five, let's see in the, in the decimal place, let's see. Right, so in decimal place, basically this will be 0 0.4 and this will be obviously 0 0.6. So you could say that in the long run, 40% will rent um, 60% of the people will own in the long run. So after enough years in this case, because each observation is a year, right? The way we describe the problem. Okay, so stay tuned for a quick uh, demonstration with Maple and that's it for today. See you later.